good afternoon, everybody. This is the, now the fourth lecture in the uh, course Biodiversity and Biotechnology. And in this uh, fourth lecture, uh, we're going to talk about uh, a few things. First, to know the definition of pretreatment in a biorefinery. So right now, in the first lesson, we talked about what is a biorefinery. We, in the second and third, we kind of felt about biomass, what can you do with it, what are the general ideas of a biorefinery you can use. But now we're going to go specifically to the first most, let's say, the most important step, the pretreatment. I don't know if it's the most important, but it's certainly a very important step. Um, so we'll need to know the definition of pretreatment step in a biorefinery, know the different pretreatment classifications and the applications within the biorefineries, and uh, the last outcome is being able to select applicable pretreatment technologies based on given requirements of the conversion steps and the feedstock properties that must be changed. Okay? So, what is pretreatment in biorefinery? The definition of a pretreatment uh, it's a can be a little bit vague. It depends on, uh, on who you ask. For uh, technologists, or for biorefinery people, the definition is uh, uh, pretreatment is a technology which changes the biorefinery feedstock properties to meet the requirements for effective conversion steps. Yeah? So you have a raw feedstock. It may be, uh, for you guys, it's grass, it's lemna, it's sugar beet leaves, it's uh, spirulina. We go through some kind of pretreatment step before we can convert it, before we can extract it, before we can filter it, let's say. There's some kind of step here uh, of a pretreatment, and there are several categories. Let's talk about the pretreatment of lignocellulosic biomass. What are the effective conversion steps? What are the requirements for these steps? What feedstock properties must be changed? And which technologies are effective? If you know this, you can define a pretreatment. Yeah. So if you know what you want to convert, that's why it's so important. In that's why we, I, I presented it first. What is in the biomass? And that's why the last question of the homework in three, I want you to start thinking about the end products. It may sound weird, but if you don't know what you can get out of it, then there's no use in defining a biorefinery. If uh, you, if you, why design a biorefinery for, uh, to, um, what's it called, sugar beet leaves, if there's no, no proteins? The very first thing is you have to find out what's in it then what, how you convert it. And before you can do that, now that you know what you, what you need, what is the pretreatment you need? So if you define lemna, that has a lot of protein. Okay, now we know our goal is protein. How do we get that out? How do we, we pretreat it to get the protein out? So, first challenge is lignin and hemicellulose. And this is, um, this is an error that Ignore that E there. <laughs> That's Dutch. Um, as you hopefully can recall, you have lignin is this 3D chicken wire, yeah? With inside and going through it is uh, the uh, hemicellulose. They themselves, so here's the glucose monomers uh, making up cellulose. They wind up in bundles, and the bundles are wound up in bundles. And these bundles are round up in bundles, and they're stuck in the cell wall. So if you want to get something out, you have to separate all of that. The first challenge is the uh, crystallinity of the cellulose, so the crystalline structure of cellulose. Here is, here it is, here it is. They're intermolecular H bridges, hydrogen bridges, in between the uh, cellulose. One of the barriers is that cellulose enzymes is limited access to which of the cellulose that is buried within the high ordered and tightly packed fibril architecture of the cellulose microfibrils. That's very long. I'll explain it maybe more easily. Imagine you have um, a, a pair of scissors and you want to cut fabric. You can't get the scissors 
into the fabric if its the fabric is locked into uh, a, an ice cube, basically. Yeah. So ice ice is a crystal form of water, and the scissors you want you you want to get, they're stuck in that crystal, and that's a a, a simplistic way of of thinking about it. But the enzyme at really acts as a scissor. And if you want to get into it, there's a crystal structure you have to break first. Yeah. So here's this uh, microfibril, fibril. Here's the cellulose elemental fibril, and then that's the H, H bond network. If the enzyme for the enzyme to get into here, it has to break through not only the cellulose structure but also the fiber structure. And that's very difficult for an enzyme. It's, they're they're not that powerful. So we need to think about different types of preparation techniques to get into to get our get enzyme into that um, into that uh, cellulose. So the ideal preparation to need is cheap. <laughs> Obviously, I think I goes without saying maybe, but I'll say it anyway. It has to be cheap, and it has to stop the formation of degradation products that could form an inhibitor to fermentation, for example. So create a surface for the enzyme. Yeah, so you need to break it apart so that the enzyme can work. It will set the cellulose free through a removal or hydrolysis of hemicellulose and removal of lignin, lower the crystallinity of the cellulose, and improves the adsorption desorption speed of the enzyme, because that's how enzymes work. They adsorb and they desorb. Chemical change of the lignin structure itself and the removal of inhibitors from the substrate. So that's the goal, yeah, to uh, create a surface deep inside, uh, set it free, either through hydrolysis, get rid of the crystallinity, uh, speed up the enzyme process. That's mostly thermochemical, so just higher temperatures, for example. But you can also stirring, <laughs> mechanical stirring helps uh, for enzymes. A chemical change of lignin structure and removal inhibitors. An inhibitor um, is like fats, for example. Anything that's not what you want. Um, uh, if it's, if it's like it can coat. So you already have this bundles of bundles of bundles. And if you have on top of that like a, a, a lipid or, or, a, or, or a, a polyphenol or any molecule that will inhibit it. Thank you for that question, Yannick. Here is a um, not exhaustive list, but a, a good list of physical, chemical, physical, and biological methods of preparing um, something such as a lignocellulose material. Me uh, mechanical or physical methods. Uh, this is some of the things we'll be doing actually in the in the lab. Grinding. That's what, what you guys are doing with the hand uh, staff mixer, right? So you can use a ball mill, a, a two-roll mill, a hammer mill, a colloid mill, and a vibroid energy milling. Other ways of uh, milling include, anybody think, what else are we doing? We're doing two methods. We're doing a blender and something else. Anybody remember what we said? I said. Anybody here remember what we're doing in the labs? Sound. Thank you. You'll piss on the ball. So yeah, there are two methods we're going to be using in the labs to break down our material to release the proteins. For the first, we're going to use mechanical. We're going to use a hand, a staff mixer, zzz, blend it like a smoothie, and the other is we're going to use a sonicator. So we're going to blast it with uh, sound energy. It's also a type of physical um, method. You can also irradiate it with gamma rays. Turn you won't turn into the Hulk. <laughs> you might get cancer, but you won't get you won't be the Hulk. Um, microwave is also a technique quite often used. You can just throw it in the microwave; it'll also destroy the uh, cell walls. But hydrothermal, high pressure steam expansion, or combination of steam expansion, extrusion and pyrolysis. We'll be going into uh, a lot of these into more detail. These are all physical methods. 
Now we also have chemical and physiochemical methods. So this is a, a mixture. So you can add steam to ammonia, CO2, SO2, or acids. That's expansion. Alkali, so adding a, a base. Acids, lots of acids you can choose from. They will also break down lignin, etc. Gases, oxidators, which will oxidize certain things. We have hydrogen peroxide, wet oxidation, ozone. And the extraction of lignin with solvents. So you can use ethanol water extraction, benzene extraction, ethylene extraction, butanol water extraction. These are all ways of extracting lignin with the solvent. Biological methods, lastly, not least, maybe even, well, um, yeah, maybe it is the one of the three, possibly the least used, but it has the most growth right now. Is uh, exa examples are using fungi and enzymes, uh, lignin peroxidase, which is a um, it breaks down the lignin, manganese peroxidase, lactase. These are all enzymes. Those are biological methods of breaking down. Um, the material. Any questions now about the first few uh, slides before I continue? No questions on the slide either? No? Okay, good. Because we're now going to go a little bit deeper. And I want to, um, I want to show you, if, I think the best way of showing how these huge uh, milling things work is to watch it. So I have a couple of, I'm going to explain it to you, but um, there are a couple of videos. I have the link here. You can click on it. It should work. Uh, and you can take, it'll take you to the YouTube video to show how it works. It'll take a few minutes each, but let me explain first. So milling, what is milling? Maybe you've heard of windmills. <laughs> this is the Netherlands. You've probably heard of windmills. Um, but a mill, there are lots of different types. You have, uh, a mill is, uh, you're reducing it by either chopping, cutting, or uh, grinding. Yeah. So the the original windmills, uh, they you would put grain on on this on this uh, stone, and the stone would go around underneath another stone, and it would uh, crush grains. But there are other methods. We have ball milling, two roll milling, which is two uh, uh, mills. Hammer milling, which is actually here, I think it's the, like the coolest, but the hammer milling. Colloid milling, which is a shear milling in liquid. So shearing is like rubbing uh, in a liquid. Vibro energy milling, a vibration of particles in liquid. Uh, and the goal is just to reduce the materi material lower crystallinity. However, high energy costs. And remember, that, that was like the number one, the number one selection criteria, wasn't it? Costs, so these are not cheap. And uh, so that's energy, high variable costs. Uh, so uh, it's, 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 difficult, it's expensive to buy and it's expensive to maintain. And furthermore, there's no economies of scale. Uh, that means if you, if you want to do more, it'll also cost you more. And quite often if you like say, if you bake cookies, and you make 12 at a time, it's more expensive than making uh, 100 at a time. So you you have economy of scale for cookies. Making more cookies makes each cookie cheaper. However, using mills, not so much. Because the more, the more you need to mill, the higher the costs commensurate to what it is. So, um, yes, exactly, Christian. It's, it's just... Um, I'm sure you've probably seen them. Uh, have you ever um, gone to a museum and you can put like a coin in the machine and it'll, you can crank it and it'll go through uh, two rolls and it'll squish it? That's what that is. Yeah, you got it. Um, I'm going to pause the video so you guys can watch. Go to YouTube here. And we'll be back in, uh, I'll say at 2.30, at 14.30. I'll let you watch what these videos. We'll be back at 14.30. Now you've had time to watch the video. You'll see the different types. Um, basically, uh, the ball mill here, you have the balls of different size. And as it gets uh, 
turned around, uh, it, uh, it crushes the material as it goes through. And then the hammer mill here is pictured. Okay. Hydrothermal processes uh, or high pressure steam. It's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting one that we use. I think in my presentation of the project, I actually showed you one. In, uh, uh, in Bergam, they take chicken feathers and they do this. They do hydro uh, high pressure steam. So first what you do is you, uh, you, boil, uh, you boil it in hot water to 150 degrees Celsius for up to 15 minutes. Uh, water then, uh, then penetrate, will hydrate the cellulose, removes the hemicellulose, it removes a portion of the lignin, but it's not as effective as removing hemicellulose, and it auto hydrolyzes uh, through releasing organic acids such as acetic acid. How does that work? Let me restate that. So when you boil something in water, you break down the break down the structure of the cells. Certain within the cell, there are certain organic acids, so acids such as acetic acid, that will hydrolyze. Um, the, the, the lignin and the, hemi, and the hemicellulose. Other advantages, you use no chemicals. What are the advantages of, of not using chemicals? Anybody out there remember? Two, the, what are the two things that we want to uh, keep from not happening? What is uh, how do we evaluate a pre-step pre treatment step? Anybody have and I remember that from like the first sheet? Cost, yeah. So chemicals cost a lot of money, and uh, the other is the uh, if you use uh, chemicals, they destroy the uh, some of the things you're looking for. So you don't want to make um, things that uh, can inhibit your process. There's already, this is my last video for today, uh, but this is a really cool one. This kind of hydrothermal process, the high pressure steam, is uh, being used at the uh, Inbicon, uh, Inbicon st station. So again, I'm going to uh, ask you to uh, to Click on this link and uh, watch the video. And this one, uh, again, will be back in, uh, let's say, another 10 minutes. Yeah, another 10 minutes. So back at um, uh, 2.45.